Hello, I'd like to show you how to perform inference on a particle photon 2 from a machine learning model that you have trained on an edge impulse project. Here's an overview of how inference is going to work once we have deployed the project to our photon 2. We're going to collect accelerometer data, this is three axes, at 62.5 hertz, and we're going to do that for one second. We're going to fill up a buffer. This buffer is going to contain 186 raw feature values, and we're going to pass that buffer into the run classifier function, which comes from our Edge Impulse C++ SDK. When we call that function, the first thing that's going to happen is the features are going to be processed. This is going to be sent to the spectral analysis block where processing happens, and it's going to do whatever is necessary, in this case, some fast Fourier transforms, getting the power spectral density of those raw features, and it's going to create a set of 39 values, which are our processed features. These values are then sent to our three-layer dense neural network model where inference is performed, and the output of that is going to be four values. Each of these values corresponds to the probability or confidence score that the data that we just input belongs to one of the classes. So for example, the probability that the data belongs to the idle class or the snake class or the up down or the wave. Because we are using soft max in our model at the output of our model, those probability values should add up to one, which means that we should in theory be able to take the highest value and assume that's what the model believes the class should be. Or we can set a threshold in order to perform some action around that. And what we're going to do is set a threshold for the snake class to turn on an LED whenever the probability of snake is over 0.5. To begin, open up your Edge Impulse project. In this case, I already have a project designed where I collected data doing continuous gestures from my particle P2. You can see, for example, wave, the up-down motion, and so forth. I've got snake and idle are my four classes. I have gone through the process of designing an impulse. So we have spectral analysis, classification. In the spectral analysis, it extracts the features using things like the fast Fourier transform to go from 186 raw features per window to 39 process features. Those features get fed into our classifier. In this case, it's a simple three-layer dense neural network, and I've trained it for 100 epochs. You can see here I've got an accuracy of about 90%. It's not bad, it's a good starting place, and it's gonna work well enough for demonstrating how we perform inference on the Photon 2. When you are satisfied with the way your model works, go ahead and head to deployment. When you search here, you're gonna to wanna to search for particle, look for particle library, select your settings. In this case, I'm gonna keep it quantized, and I'm gonna click build. And we're gonna wait just a moment while the project compiles all of the processing classification, the machine learning model, into a nice C++ project for us that we can open up as a particle project. When it's done processing, you should see a pop-up saying, go ahead and download this library. Let's click Save. I'm going to go over and I'm going to unzip that library. That should create a folder on my system. And then I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. I highly recommend it because you will want to install the particle workbench. If you have not done so already, go to Extensions, type Particle, and install the Particle Workbench. That's the framework we're going to be working with when we build this code. From the Particle Workbench Hello screen, which you can get to by clicking on the Particle Workbench icon on the left side, you can see a number of options here. What we want to do is go to the Command Palette, Type the greater than symbol to make it the command palette, or use the command palette hotkeys. Type particle, colon, and we're going to say import project. Click import. It's going to ask you to open a project.properties file. So say open. Go to your downloads. Click on that folder we just unzipped and click project.properties. Yes to open that. When that opens, feel free to close the open tabs. And we are going to need to configure it for our particular board. So open the command palette again, type particle. We're going to look for configure project for device. And it's going to ask us a few things here. First up, click the device OS. I know this works for 5.5.0, so let's go with that. We're going to click Photon 2, which is our board. And it's going to ask for a device ID here, or a name. You are going to need to give it the device ID that you set up in the particle system. 
So once you have run through the setup process for your particular Particle 2 board, you should be able to go to console.particle.io slash devices. You should be able to click on your device and you wanna copy this ID number. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. I'm gonna go back to VS Code. I'm gonna paste that here and click enter. Now the project is configured to build and flash to my device. So I go to VS Code, feel free to look at settings.json and sure enough, there's the information I just input. We don't need this, but know that that's where it resides. Next up, go to your source folder, click on main.cpp. This is where we're going to be writing our code. I'm gonna expand this out a little bit so you can see it. This code comes from Edge Impulse and it's a good way to test performing static inference. This is where you go to say, get your raw features from a test sample, paste them in here. Feel free to look at that document that's linked here to see how to do that and see if inference indeed runs on your particle device. But we don't wanna do static inference. We wanna perform inference by collecting data right from the accelerometer. So we wanna do live inference. So we're not actually going to use this at all. We're just gonna create a buffer, more or less a global buffer, at least for this file that we can write to and then read when we go to perform inference. But I did forget to add a couple of libraries here. We wanna be able to access the particle library and we wanna access the accelerometer. Note that as part of project properties, this says include these libraries which come from the particle system. It downloads them into the lib folder. If you go to ADXL362DMA, you can find the source code for that sensor driver. And I like to look at examples and I'm actually gonna be pulling a lot of snippets from this very simple example. So for example, when we go to read the accelerometer, this is how we read from that accelerometer and this is how we set it up. I will be pulling from there as we go through this. In addition to this features global variable, we also want to create a more or less global accelerometer object that's coming from that library. We're gonna be talking to it over spy and note that A2 is D13 on the P2. So it's connected to the A2 pin, which is also D13. A2 is undefined because it conflicts with something in the edge impulse library. So yeah, go with D13 in this case. The classes are saved in alphabetical order. You can find that if you scroll down to where they are printed out, this EI classifier inferencing categories, go to the definition of that, and you can see the categories or the labels from our project. They are in alphabetical order. That's how they're saved in Edge Impulse. So idle is index zero, index one, index two, and index three. So keep that in mind. So index one is the snake class. So that's what we're gonna set here as our target class. Next up, we have our raw feature get data callback. This is a callback that we have created and we're gonna send to the run classifier. That's a function that's called inside of the Edge Impulse library. This callback helps the run classifier ingest data. So it's gonna give us an offset, which we're going to use by saying features plus some offset into features. And we're gonna copy the number of elements specified by length and size of float because features is going to be floating point values. That is all going to be stored into an output pointer, which is something that is passed into us from the edge impulse system or that library. And from this, you should, I believe, always return a zero unless something goes wrong. We're going to keep this in here where it prints the inferencing results that's down below that we just looked at. In setup, we're going to initialize D7, which is the user LED that's next to the USB port on the P2. We're going to wait for that serial connection in order to log things. We're going to initialize the accelerometer. To initialize the accelerometer, we're going to call soft reset, and then we're just going to wait until the accelerometer is done. We are going to use a 2G range because that's the range that was used to collect data for the Edge Impulse project. We're not going to worry about changing any of these other settings. ODR is our output data rate, so 200 hertz is fine because we're actually only sampling at about 62 hertz, which is what we sampled with for data collection. And we're going to set the measure mode to true. In loop, we want to fill up that buffer with raw accelerometer data. 
And I'm going to thank GitHub Copilot here for predicting exactly what I want to do. Almost. This EI classifier DSP input frame size is defined inside the edge impulse library, and this expands to 62 times 3, or that 186. So we're just going to loop through our values as we read them from the accelerometer. And Copilot almost has this right. It doesn't actually want the address. It wants the values for whatever reason. I'm not sure why it works like that, but it does. I'm sure if we dug into the definition here, you can see that yeah, it's expecting the addresses already, so we can just pass those. Our first axis is x, and so we're going to perform the math necessary to convert that from that raw accelerometer reading, which you can find in the accelerometer library examples. And we're going to convert it, which comes out in g's, to meters per second squared, because that's the scale the data was collected in for training the model. And Copilot correctly predicts that I want to do the same for Y. And look at that, it predicts what I want to do for Z. Thank you, Copilot. Copilot is very, very useful, but as a public service announcement, don't always completely trust the AI. Definitely double check what it's outputting. We're going to make a note here to say we're done sampling and go ahead and perform inference. And we're going to run the classifier. Actually, this doesn't run the classifier. Almost copilot, you almost had it. We're going to check the feature array size. Once again, this is in the Edge Impulse library. This expands to 186, and it's going to check to make sure that the feature array is the correct size. Otherwise, go ahead and return. Um, if you don't, you might end up with like a buffer overflow problem. Then this is pretty much the same that the Edge Impulse example gives us here. We're going to create a signal struct. In that, we're going to define the total length, which is just the size of our features array. It's the number of elements. We are going to assign this callback. So get data uh, should be assigned to the address of a callback function. This is the raw feature get data. Um, the definition is up here. So this is the function right here. And that's the callback that gets used during run classifier when inference is being performed or that processing step is being performed where it extracts features. It says, give me more data, give me more data. It's going to call that function. Now we invoke run classifier, where we're going to pass it in this signal struct that has our callback and the size of our array. We're going to pass it in the address of our result struct, which we defined up here. And we're going to say no to debugging. So false is the last one. If something goes wrong, this result return value will not be EI impulse OK. So we can say something went wrong and get out of this loop. We're then going to print the inference return code to make sure everything looks OK. And we're going to go ahead and wait a second. Actually, I do not want to do that. I'm going to say immediately go into sampling again. Finally, we get into this section of printing out the inference results. In result.timing, you can get the timing for how many milliseconds it took to perform each section of the impulse. So your DSP is your processing step. That's that feature extraction to go from 186 raw readings for a sample and turn that into the 39 output of that DSP or the spectral analysis block. How long it took to do classification. And if we had an anomaly block, which we don't, how long it took to perform anomaly detection. We're not doing object detection, so we can skip this section here. And we're going to get down to predictions, where it's going to loop through the number of labels. In this case, it's four. It's going to print out the label, the actual string of that label, of that class. And it's going to give us result.classification. Notice that we're indexing here. So zero is going to be, say, idle. One's going to be snake. And the value, which is the output of the model. And that's going to be the confidence value or the probability that the model believes that the input data belongs to that particular class. And Finally, we can print the anomaly results, but because we're not using an anomaly detection block, we're just going to skip that. Remember how we set that target class earlier? And Copilot predicts exactly what I want to do. It's picking a threshold of 0.8. I'm going to pick something a little lower. I'm going to say 0.5. But this is correct. We do want to do a digital write to D7, which is that user LED. We're going to turn that on. If that target class, in this case snake, is above 0.5, Otherwise, go ahead and turn D7 off. So don't forget to save this, which I will save here. 
assuming everything is set up correctly, let's minimize some of these. We can just click this lightning bolt. Make sure your P2 is plugged into your computer. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and show that. So here's my Photon 2 ready to go. It's plugged in, it's connected. It's got this teal light going on. And I'm going to click the lightning bolt. This will take probably about 10 minutes to compile. It is a little bit slow, so this is a good time to take a break. Hopefully you see this flash successfully and nothing broke while you're uploading or compiling your project. With it done, let's go up here to the command palette and let's do particle, open up the serial monitor. Uh, sure, go ahead and reconnect. With any luck, you should see the predictions coming by your screen. We have idle right here. If we do up down, you should see that be the highest value here. We can do something like wave. And if I do that right, I think I have to hold it like this. There we go. We have wave coming out at 0.57. And if we put it here and we do the little snake, you can see snake hopefully becomes the highest. Yeah, 0.8. And because in our code we said turn on the user LED with snake, the LED right by the USB port should come on. So I'll do that one more time. In fact, let me zoom in. And now you can see when I do snake, you can see this LED come on. And when it goes to idle, nothing happens. And then same thing, I can do up and down. Oh, it, think, it thinks this was snake, which is fine. There it goes. But if I do up and down, that does not turn on. I hope this helps you get started doing inference from a model trained inside an Edge Impulse project on your Particle Photon 2.